Kia ora. So this is the 2015 practice exam at Lincoln High for Level 3 Probability, and we're doing question 2A. A local hairdresser is running a competition where you can win a free haircut or a discount on your haircut. Every time you get your haircut, you spin the wheel to the right, and whatever the number is, you get that taken off the price of your haircut. At the store, a haircut normally costs 40 bucks. Over the course of the week, the manager records the number of customers that get each prize, and the results are shown on the bar graph below. So we can see here on the wheel that um, there's a bunch of different prizes. Everything from getting the haircut for free um, down to just a $10, uh, a $10 prize. Here's the results from the week. And it says here, part one, across the week there were 270 of the 500 customers who got a $10 discount. How does this line up with what was expected to happen in theory? Okay, so theory means that when we're looking at the wheel, if we assume that each of those outcomes there is equally likely, and I think there's 16 of them, and 8 of those 16 involve $10. There is a 8 out of 16 or 0 0.5 probability of winning the $10 prize. So then out of 500 customers, what would you expect in theory? How many would you expect to win the $10 prize? So we expect 250 of the 500 customers to win $10 in theory. Okay. So what actually happened in the observed results? Well, it tells us that 270 did. So we better say that. So you can think of this as a sample. And this sample of 500 customers, 270 did. Now, <clears throat> 270 um, compared to 250, the question is, could that just be down to chance alone? And the random variation we expect from one sample to the next due to chance alone? Or is the difference too big to be explained by chance alone? This difference of 20 between the observed and the expected frequency is seems small and could be due to chance alone, the random variation that's produced by chance alone when you conduct an experiment or select a sample. It's going to be different every time, isn't it? Okay, part two. Describe how these two probabilities compare with the true probability of getting a $10 discount at the hairdressers. Well, what's the true probability? Well, the true probability is the actual probability of it happening, and it's we don't actually know what it is. Here's our true probability of winning the $10 prize. And that's unknown. And it could be influenced by a few things. Firstly, it could be influenced, well, we, we expect it to be influenced by how many sectors there are with $10 on them. But secondly, what's that assuming? Well, it's assuming that each of the sectors is equally likely to come up. So that could be influenced by other things like the way the wheel is spun, where they start spinning it from. Um, whether it's evenly weighted. So there's a few other factors that could actually affect the true probability. <clears throat> so there's two ways we have to try to estimate this true probability. One is theoretical calculations, which we sometimes call model estimates. And here, our model estimate was um, the one where we calculated a 50% chance of getting a $10 prize because 8 out of the 16 sectors had ten dollars had ten dollars on them. And that assumed something though. That assumed what did it assume? Well it assumed that the wheel was equally likely to stop spinning on each of those sixteen sectors. So that therefore if half of the sectors had ten dollars, half the time you win ten dollars. What could be some barriers to that um, actually being the case in real life? Well, think about what we might be assuming, because whenever we do a model estimate of probability, we're assuming some stuff. Well, equally likely would depend on 
might depend on how the wheel was spun. Perhaps if it was spun from a different point on the wheel, different starting point, it might influence its likely finishing point. Perhaps the friction was different in different parts. Perhaps the wheel wasn't evenly weighted. There's all these things we don't actually know. We can't really know for sure. So, so theoretical calculations rely on assumptions. The next thing we do to test that is we then actually record some data, either collect it or we run an experiment. In this case, they collected data on the 500 customers that week. And that's called an experimental or observed estimate of the probability. The experimental or observational estimates. So we start with the theoretical calculations, then we collect data, and that gives us our experimental or observational estimates. And that's like the 270 out of 500 results and $10 from the, um, from the sample of 500 customers. So that's done either from an experiment or from a random sample, usually. And what's that subject to? Well, because the theoretical calculations were subject to assumptions, well, the experimental observational estimates are subject to random variation due to chance, plus any other factors that we haven't considered yet, like the way the wheel was spun. So we've got the problem of trying to work out the true probability of something that we can't know for sure, right? the probability of winning a $10 prize on this wheel. And we start with the theoretical calculations, which is what we think will happen based on our assumptions. Step two, we move to actually collecting data, so experimental or observational estimates of that probability. And then we compare. And sometimes um, in the real world, that then leads us to revise our original theoretical model because we might find out more information we didn't already know. Like the example of the professor who got a machine to flip an American quarter thousands of times and actually found out that the assumption of it being equally likely to land heads and tails wasn't quite right. And so they had to revise it and realise that that coin wasn't entirely fair. So that's an example of revising our original model. And then eventually, where we want to go to with that is we want to get closer and closer to this mysterious true probability, which we can never really know for sure. So the whole idea here is to try and estimate that. Sometimes also we do a simulation, uh, which is based on theoretical or experimental um, frequencies and do that using software as well. But they're the main three types, so theoretical, experimental and true. So if we apply that to this particular question, this model here, so describe how these two probabilities compare with the true probability of getting a $10 discount. Well, of course, the first point is that we don't know the true probability of winning $10. Our best estimates are the theoretical calculation of 50% chance of winning $10 of 0 0.5, um, and the experimental estimate of 270 out of 500, which we call the observed estimate, 270 divided by 500, what's that? 0 0.54. And going back to our flow diagram, we should point out the limitations of those two types of estimates. So the theoretical's limitation is what? Well, it relies on the assumption of the 16 sectors being equally likely. So let's write that down. And this may not be the case if the um, if the outcome is influenced by the way the the wheel is spun, or if the weights um, if the weights not evenly distributed around the wheel. So, e.g., it may not be the cat, or e.g., it may be influenced by other factors like how the wheel is spun or weight distribution. And then we look to the experimental data, and what is that subject to? Well, that's subject to random variation due to chance, plus, of course, those other hidden factors. So, the true probability is not going to be subject to 
the random variation because that's the thing that we're trying to estimate. But it could be subject to those other hidden factors. So those other any other hidden factors that affected our our experimental results should be well are part of the true probability, aren't they? The ingredients. We just don't know what they are. So what we'd need to do is we'd need to collect more data and um, you know and to get a much clearer picture of what that true probability is. So let's write that down. My writing is bigger than yours will be on your sheet, so I'm going to struggle with space here. Um, if you ever need more space in an exam, ask the examiner for more paper. So I'm going to finish by saying, talking about the experimental though. The experimental estimate of 0.54 subject to random variation due to chance plus other factors. Because every time we run an experiment like that, and collect 500 customers' data, it's going to be a slightly different percentage of, um, of $10 prizes one, isn't it? So that's the random aspect. We can't avoid that. Um, plus any of those other factors. The best thing to do, or to get a clearer picture of the true probability, we would need to collect a lot more data and run more trials and then keep revising that probability estimate for getting $10. Because the bigger the sample, the clearer the picture we get of the way things really are. So from the top, we don't know the true probability of winning $10. Our best estimates are the theoretical model estimate of 0.5 and the experimental observed estimate of 0.54. The theoretical estimate relies on the assumption that the wheel is equally likely to come to rest on each of the 16 sectors. This may not be the case. For example, it may be influenced by other factors like how the wheel is spun or weight distribution. The experimental estimate of 0.54 is subject to random variation due to chance plus any of those other factors mentioned above. To get a clearer picture of the true probability of winning the $10 prize, we should collect more data by spinning the wheel many more times and counting how often $10 is won. Because the bigger the sample, the clearer the picture of the way things really are. And if we look at how that one was marked, And we see that to get excellence, you needed a clear explanation of how the observed proportion, so the experimental, is, is unlikely to be the same as the theoretical probability. So we talked about that and how random variation might um, affect that due to chance. And a discussion about what true probability is and what could affect it in part. So we talked about the way the wheel is spun and maybe the weight distribution. And it says, so while we expect the true probability to be close to the to the theoretical probability of 0.5, the experimental probability of 0.54, we cannot know exactly what it is. Nice work. It's worth practicing some of these, so I imagine your teacher will give you some more like this to do. And just keep that flow diagram really clear in your mind, this one here, of what's going on here, this whole process of estimating true probability.